and do a measure by measure breakdown of Washington's March as learned from Laurel Primo. Remember we're in the double C tuning and we're capoed up to the second fret which means we've tuned our G string up to an A. Now we're ready to go ahead and take a look at measure number one. Start out down on the fourth string. We're going to do a hammer on, a slide, and a few other things as well. Should look and sound like this. We have hammer, slide, knock down, pull off. So that's measure number one. Notice uh, I am using the same fingering choices that Laurel used when she showed me this tune. Uh, that's hence the slide there. So instead of just staying in position and using our pinky to play those fifth fret notes, we're going to uh, oftentimes use our third finger, put us up uh, in a different position here. So when we get to the second measure, we're going to start off right where we left off. We have our third finger on the fifth fret, fourth string, and the second measure looks and sounds like this. Bit of a boom chicka here with a drop thumb. Boom chicka. Drop thumb on that fourth string note. Then a phantom stroke in this next strum. Boom chicka. If you don't know what these terms mean, knock down, phantom stroke, boom chicka, all that. These are just some ways that I communicate some basic banjo ideas. You can get familiar with those if you haven't already by checking out the beginner crash course at playbetterbanjo.com, uh, also in the Clawhammer 101 course. Those two courses get you all the basics and we'll get all this terminology making sense to you if it doesn't right now. If you don't want to do that, just keep on using this video, use the tab, use the close-ups, and uh, figure it out from the context of the lesson. Anyway, let's carry on and take a look at measure number three. This is very similar to measure number one. It starts out with the same few notes. We have a drop thumb and a hammer on. Again, pay attention to that left hand fingering. I'm just using my first few fingers on this. Quite a few things going on there. We have hammer-ons, slides, drop thumbs, but you should be familiar with all that. And uh, if not, just spend some time with it. You'll get the hang of it uh, by watching and repeating. Let's go ahead and move on to measure number four. Here again, we have a kind of a boom chicka strum with a drop thumb involved. And a basic strum with a phantom stroke all together.
All right, now let's take a look at the fifth and sixth measures. I'm grouping those together because they are the same as the first and second measures. So you should have that by now. I'll just play them through once together. Here's the fifth and sixth measures slowly for you. Take a look at the seventh measure now. Here we're kind of rounding off this A part, bringing it all to a melodic close. Starting out with some familiar notes. And then a little bit of a different move here at the end of the measure. Open third string, then a drop thumb. Second fret, first string, open second string. takes us to the eighth measure and that's our first ending here. That'll look and sound like this. So we've got drop thumb, a little knock down there, and then we're going to uh, jump up to the fifth fret. We've already got our second finger here on the fourth fret, third string. We're just going to move it up to the fifth fret. And I like to hit not only the fifth fret note, which is a D note, but also the open low string, which is also a D note. In the tab, I've got the open second string, and that works as well. That's also a D note. You can hit any and all of those. Once you have this fifth fret fretted on the third string, you can hit any and all of these three strings. So I like to get a little punch there at the end of the phrase. All right, we'll move on to measure number nine. This is the second ending. So after you play measure number eight, you go back, you repeat the whole part up through measure number seven, then you jump over to measure number nine for your second ending. Starts out the same as measure eight. Just ends differently. Instead of just holding that note, there's a little chicka at the end, just open first and fifth string. One more time on that measure number nine. That's the entire A part. Uh, once you're feeling pretty good about that, move on to the B part. So let's take a look at measure number one of the B part, which should be measure number 10 in your tab. Here we're doing some drop thumb rolls in a really fun way. This is a part of the tune that's really enjoyable once you get the hang of it. Uh, we're playing off the second and fifth frets of the first string, and we're doing this drop thumb roll. All right, so measure number 10 will look and sound like this. Just a repeating idea, our right hand's just doing the drop thumb roll, which uh, string wise is one, two, one, five, one, two, one, five. Meanwhile, our left hand's going back and forth between the second and fifth frets. Takes us to measure number 11. Here we have a familiar sequence of notes, just kind of in a different context here. We have the drop thumb on the open first two strings. A little knock down with the fourth fret on the third string. Then do some knock down as we kind of walk up. Open third on the first string. I'll go ahead and play it a couple times for you without over explaining it so you can just watch in here. And you may want to pay attention to my left hand fingering choices here. I'm just using my second finger for all the fretted notes. Next measure, measure 12, is the same as measure 10, so just a repeat. Go ahead and take a look at measure number 13. And this is a copy of the second ending in our A part. So this is also familiar to you already. Knock down 
not going to dwell on these measures because we've already covered the same musical phrases earlier in the song. So we're going to kind of cruise through most of the rest of this. Take a look at measure number 14. That's a measure we've already done a couple times, a little musical idea we've already done a couple times. That's our drop thumb roll idea. Measure 15 is the same as measure 11. Take a look at measure 16. That's our first ending there. We're going to start just with our first finger on that second fret first string. We have boom, chicka, a little phantom stroke. So we have a, kind of a brush. That's the first half. Next half, pull off, drop thumb. So all together. Take some time at that if you're having a little trouble with the timing, but it's pretty straightforward. Measure 17 here is going to wrap it all up. Nothing new here really, so I'll just go ahead and play it for you a couple more times. Again, when you get to that 5th fret 3rd string note, and I have the open 2nd string along it, you can also include the 4th string open if you'd like, or any combination of the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th strings once you have that D note down on the 5th fret. So when I end this, I usually focus on that low D string, I just like the sound of it. So of course you'd repeat the B part all the way through until you get to the end there and you jump to the second ending on the final time through. And now we have some knockdown on the fifth and third fret. Watch the fingering. I'm staying in position here. Pinky, second, first. And the very final measure, just a little drop thumb. And we're going to end on again on that hit, that fifth fret hit. That should make sense to you. Hopefully that's all clear. I'm going to go ahead and play you the whole thing just the way it's written in the tab. I'm going to play it for you nice and slowly. Three, four, 